Growing up, trips to New York City left Gina DeWall dazzled by the lights of Times Square. Even the 42nd Street McDonald's entranced her. Now she's become Broadway royalty as a talented performer is taking on the role of the iconic Princess Diana in Diana the Musical. Hear about the time she poured drinks for Prince Harry and more on this week's Show People. Gina, Hello. welcome. Hello. How are you doing? Good, very good. You are in a big Broadway musical. This is like the, the stuff of dreams, right? This is the stuff of dreams, yeah. So they always say like appreciate the big moments in life. Yes. This is one of those moments. This is absolutely one of those moments. So congrats. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is absolutely like beyond, beyond what I've Beyond. You know, it's so funny. Your name is Gina. It took me so long to wrap my head around. It's such an unusual I know. They made spelling. It but it makes total sense. I mean, it's my Jean. two grandmas, Jean and Anna. So it was sort of a specialty name created for you to honor the family. Yes, exactly. It's cool. I like it. Now that I know how to say it, I'm into it. It took my brain like a long time to wrap my head around it. Yeah. So you're Princess Diana. I yes. mean, that's like, that, that's a big statement. I'm playing Princess <laughs> Diana. <laughs> I mean, when I first heard they were writing a musical. Yes, what was uh, your reaction? And I loved Memphis. The Tony winning Memphis team were creating a new musical about Diana. And I immediately said, wait a minute, oh, somebody has to play her. Like, that's daunting. Uh huh. And yeah. you saw the first reading. I did. I saw the reading. So is that the first time that you did it in front of people? That was the, uh, yeah, I had auditioned for it maybe two weeks before that. Wow. Um, and it was just, you know, a reading. That's where we were two, two and a half years ago. Obviously. Yeah, that was at the at Vassar. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the audition. Did you immediately say, well, I should obviously be in the running for this. I mean, I can sing and uh, I know Broadway and I'm British and I'm blonde. All and the things. So <laughs> I was like, uh, you know, as you are when you're in a, an actor in New York. I was in a workshop of someone else's and I got the sides the day before, as uh -huh. you do, and they said, can you go in the lunch break? And I said, I will try. Mm -hmm. And I ran over to Telsey in the lunch break and um, read the sides. And they, they weren't, I don't think they were seeing many people because it was just to cast this reading. It was sort okay. of like, we'll right. do the process later. Let's just get someone to say the yeah. words, you know? But I got it and they never asked me to audition again, which was very It just weird. kept happening. It just kept happening and here we are. <laughs> yeah, here we are. open. Yeah. And now you're on Broadway. I'm still and you're, waiting to be replaced, but it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> and now you're doing, you know, wearing William Ivy Long costumes yeah. and, and the wigs. There's wig work. The wigs. The wigs have been a process. <laughs> have they? They have. Diana had very specific, specific 80s. Very specific hair that looks effortless. Uh huh. But it is is a lot of effort to recreate in a wig. Yes. Do you remember the first time you saw yourself in sort of the really iconic? What, what do you call that? Is it is, is it a bob? What does that hair do? I don't know, but I was like, this is the thing nightmares are made of. <laughs> I look terrible. <laughs> you were, you were just like, this is... This is like, no, 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 please no, please no. Were there actual nightmares about that? <laughs> there was one video I have of, um, so I was at one of the studios where William, um, John Christensen, where they're making the dresses. And uh, anyway, I'm wearing this flowing dress. Everyone's saying, you look so pretty, you know, all these things. Do a twirl for us. And they filmed it in slow motion. Like, yeah, it looks so pretty. And I went to look at it. And it was this slow motion, just like, <laughs> just like, you know, all the parts of yourself that you hate. And I was like... No, I can't do this. I can't do this role. I can't do this. <laughs> Especially when the whole show is about, she's so pretty. She's, you know, you're just like, what? How do you live up to that? It's just awful. So how do you feel now? Are, are, do you, have you Now are, I've have become grown accustomed, into it? you know, yes. I've become accustomed to how I look in the wigs and everything. And um, obviously everything dramatically improves over time and all those things. So um, I'm just so far from who Diana is in real life. Mm. And especially in past works that I've done that have all been this like, very slovenly attitude and um, very pedestrian uh -huh. and all those things. And that was such my comfort zone for such a while right. that it's taken, you know, true conscious effort and thought and work to sort of feel completely relaxed in such a different physique and mentality and poise yeah. and all those sort of things. Yeah, that makes sense. Your resume yeah. is sort of, uh, there's a lot of rock and roll, a lot of, sort of really out there girls. You did yeah. Pinky Boots for a really long time. and. Yeah, and yeah. So the, the, and now it's like there's a little bit more of a refined element to you. I'm definitely taking on my personal life to my mom's great joy. <laughs> mom's into it. Mom's into the better articulation. <laughs> mom's into the better posture. Cool. Yeah. It seems like a lot of people your age, especially Americans, maybe don't know really that much about her. She's, you know what I mean? The actual, 
story of her. What was the first thing you did in terms of research? Just the YouTube videos, just the, just YouTube, you know. YouTube spiral. I obviously, YouTube spiral. Like middle of the had, night, YouTube, yeah. click next, next. <laughs> in the night, you know, at Vassar College in the bunk beds, just with my ear pods <laughs> in, just like, and then at that breakfast bar, yeah, just uh, huge amounts of content of just hand in hand of learning the facts so mm -hmm. that we can engage in conversation when you're doing table work and have some yeah. sort of opinion. And then also um, reflecting on how she moves and talks and, and all those things to help the embodiment of it. And, you know, we can't get over the, the book, the Andrew Morton book, the In Her Own Words, which is a huge plot point in our show, has been since yes. day one. And there's a a version of the book now that has the transcripts of those tapes in it. And so you can really like hear her, wow. like truly, truly, especially when you've watched so many videos and all those things, you have a, an essence of what her voice sounds like or how, um, or how she phrases a sentence or pauses or all those sorts of things. And then to have transcripts of her speaking, it is so um, stimulating mm -hmm. to imagine how she talks mm -hmm. and, and all those sort of things. There are a lot of fascinating plot points about her, how, how young she was when she got married. She was 20. 19. 19 when that, when that wedding happened. On, mm -hmm. I remember watching it on TV. And 19 years old, that's mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. I mean, where were you at 19? In a bar somewhere. <laughs> In a bar somewhere, not on TV, around not the world, TV. walking down yeah. the aisle with the prince. A and then the crazy relationship with uh, Camilla and the fact that Charles was sort of dating Camilla before Diana, which is something I didn't know. A lot of people no. didn't really know that. But personality-wise, what was sort of the craziest thing you found out about her in terms of who she was as a woman? Is there something that sort of jumps out that maybe really took you by surprise? You know, I think she was often painted as sort of silly or stupid or mm -hmm. all those sorts of things, but she wasn't. She was very aware of what was going on. She had very strong, you know, gut instincts mm -hmm. about the Camilla thing before she was married. But how do you pause a roller coaster that's sort of like sweeping into motion and it's on all the news channels and there's memorabilia being printed and all these sort of things and your yeah. whole family is supporting and set on you doing this and this could be the culmination of your life and everything you've dreamed on but you have these huge doubts how at 19 do you stop that and she didn't have the strength and she went along with it and right. then was left in the mess of the repercussions of what happens when something snowballs out of control and and there you are married and in a castle and alone so right. it, it it was really helpful to be older than her when all this happened so i could reflect on how complicated and challenging that must have been considering how badly i maybe handled my 20s you know and, right. and with much much less ch challenging moments so it was really only up to her to find her strength. Everything that she became and is today is because she found that little nugget with inside herself to mm. be like, I'm not gonna let go. And she molded that and grew that to become, you know, this role model that is still very much in our, in our zeitgeist today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back and talk more about your messy 20s. Great. Let's do it. We'll be right <laughs> back with more <laughs> Judith DeWall. <laughs> are back with Gina DeWall, Diana and Diana, Diana and Diana. I mean, that's <laughs> yes. crazy. Not many yes. people get to play that in that, you know? Yes. Before we move on from the topic of the Royals, I do want to hear a little bit more about something you told Broadway.com about years ago. You once uh, poured drinks for Prince Harry. I did, yes. Can you talk about that? Yes. So Set it up. Tell me about that evening in your life. So I was at drama school in Liverpool, mm -hmm. and in the holidays, I would cater for this very fancy events company. Catering was your favorite My side favorite job ever, side right? Job ever. Favorite, that was the, the high years. They paid very well, but you had to be based in London. So okay. I would literally go stay at a hostel in London and wait for the calls. Wow. Like okay. pretend I was based in London. Oh, wow. and just okay, like, okay. Anyway, so one of the events was catering for the Royals. And That's I, amazing. Yes. Uh, it was, I mean, it was a big party, but they were there. Uh -huh. And I was personally in charge of making sure that Harry's glass was always topped up with what champagne. What was Harry drinking? Champagne. And he, had a, he, was, he was with a date, he not his with, now wife. Not his no. now wife. He was with, <laughs> I think her name was Chelsea, the South African one. Do you remember? Very pretty, blonde. You know. Okay, sure. We love Harry in England. We've loved, you know, I've yeah. loved Harry since I was... Yeah, and so was, was, he, was he friendly? Was he... he was very friendly. He was the last person on the dance floor. 
Oh, okay, yeah. It's At Harry, that's why night, we love Harry. We were trying to truly clear the tables <laughs> and he was still on the dance floor. <laughs> he disappeared a few times throughout the night, not sure why. Mm -hmm. with, with the girlfriend. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, like, I like that, I like those details. <laughs> How would you feel about a royal showing up? I mean, it's probably not likely that the royals will come to the yeah. Long Acre Theater to see Diana, maybe in disguise. <laughs> maybe you would never know. I mean, would you like to see your life sang and danced? I mean, it'd be crazy. It'd be Harry and Meghan would be fun to have. I mean, if you had to choose a royal to come see it, who would you choose? The Queen. The Queen, oh, of course, <laughs> sure. That'd be wild. I don't know if she could slip in in I don't think. I don't think the Queen's coming, no. It feels like Diana really would have liked it from what I know about her personality and you know, her friendship with Elton John and, I mean, you know, those sort of things that we know about her beyond the royal life, it seems like she would dig it. I feel like she would be the one to dig it the most out of uh -huh. everyone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's about her too, so she might enjoy get a kick out of that as well. Yeah. When you were a little British girl, you yeah. actually came to New York a lot with your parents, didn't you? Sounds like your, were your parents like really into Broadway? My dad was just really supportive about sort of us following, we're millennials, you know, like, find what you love and do that sort of thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which now I'm like, why did you, uh, there's definitely been points where I'm like, why didn't you make me do maths or <laughs> whatever, but, um, <laughs> but no, the, the very supportive being like, my, my girls clearly love this and we want to support them. I mean, we were at performing arts boarding school, just musical right. theater obsessed, Broadway obsessed from across the pond. And our favorite holiday was coming to New York and seeing a bunch of Broadway shows and um, sometimes the flight would land in a, a, a little early and we'd literally head straight to a theater, leave our suitcases in the lobby. It was like a like, marathon. It was like you, you oh, actually packed many, in as many. How many, ca I, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't know that Manhattan was bigger than Times Square. Right. Yeah, and I do that when I go to London. You I, just stay yeah, in the theater. And I'll, and I'll just sort of see as many things as I can. Well, I mean, theater has the, because obviously you can't, watch it on TV or you can't watch it on film, it, yeah. this exclusivity of like, what's going on in that place? You know, yeah. it really has the ability to sort of create this en enviable excitement about, you know, you see the promos or maybe you hear a soundtrack and it's just mm -hmm. this feeling of like, but what's happening in that, in that yeah. space? You know, so we were just like desperate for it. The shiny McDonald's was, we always had to have a trip there. You know, that was our favorite restaurant. The, the big one? The Times, yeah, the Times Square one. 42nd Street? Yes, you know you, that. You had, with the marquee, it's oh like a, the Broadway yes. McDonald's. You had to go there. I had, <laughs> had to, cool. had to, yes. <laughs> and, and when's the last time you stepped in there now that you're a New Yorker? <laughs> exactly. Couldn't even tell you, couldn't even tell you. Any shows that you remember really like blowing your mind? So actually, uh, it came up in conversation yesterday because we're in the same theater, but Boeing, Boeing with Mark Rylance. Oh, that was so good. I mean, good. we didn't know who Mark, it was kind of right, before he was the, right. the famous person he is now. Yeah, So right, no, um, it was like sort of the first thing I ever saw him do. But I mean, performances like that just sort of imprint on your memory forevermore. Yeah, so your sister, yeah. Also was interested in performing. And now she works for so Google? She does. That's amazing. I mean, she was in the Once Tour. She was in the Once yep. Tour. She was in Mummy in the West End. She did a few yeah, she was Sophie. Public, Picnic on Broadway. Uh -huh. and then she was like, not for me. I mean, we say not for me, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, she's, right. she still goes to see shows about three times a week. So oh, oh. <laughs> it, she, it's not like she's, uh, yeah. she's departed completely. But, but she has a real job. Yes, I think she wanted real person things. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So when you two were were coming up, you were both really into it. Yeah. So there was a lot of like showbiz aspiration in this family. There was. And you it was both like very ended up here. British and female being like we both really wanted it, but we wouldn't admit it. Okay. Okay. That's how you play it. Okay. Yeah. Like <laughs> we definitely knew that we wanted to be in theater. I don't think I don't think we ever would have articulated that we wanted to be actresses. Okay. Do you know what I, that, uh, that yeah. seemed uh, un, unrealistic. Have you articulated that yet? Have you <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't, my managers do. <laughs> so Ben Elton actually kind of, seems like he kind of helped launch you, right? You were going to that fancy school, what's it called? Lipper. Right. So Paul McCartney went back to his old high school. It was very run down and derelict. And, and okay. so he teamed up with the guy who set up Brit School. Uh, which is like a famous London one where you know Adele and Amy Winehouse and then oh, sure. came from. Okay. It's like a government subsidi subsidized okay. arts high school uh -huh. in London. And the two of them set up Lippa, which is a performing arts university that does everything from uh, costume design to sound design cool. to 
everything. It was like the fame school, but over there, everyone, everyone was involved. The fame school is like the you know fame in America. And I've heard of it. Yeah, high school, high school <laughs> performing arts. But but it was like everyone there was really into all aspects of this all world. All aspects. Yeah. So you were yeah. really immersed in it. Really immersed. I mean, even my high school was all day, every day. I mean, wow. it start, performing arts started at eight thirty a.m. and we finished school at like nine p.m. So wow, like, you've been singing and dancing a long time. See, which is why it was such a big thing for my sister to take a minute and just be like, "Hang on, you know, yeah. I've, I've done this since I was eleven. Right. At right. some point, sure. I have to decide like, did my dad choose this for me or right. did I choose yeah. this for me? You know." Uh -huh. um, Andrew Lloyd Webber and Ben Elton were doing a workshop of a new musical, The Boys and the Photograph. Which became The Beautiful Game? Which became The Beautiful Game. Right. Or, or The Beautiful Game. Or it's called, sometimes it's called, I don't know. It's called different things. But it's that one. <laughs> that one. And <laughs> I was cast as the lead girl in that. Oh, cool. Uh, which was a cool experience. And then when I was graduating, Ben Elton didn't offer me a job, but he offered me an audition. <laughs> right. For We Will Rock You. He's like, hey, I wrote this crazy musical. Well, Queen no, Will it Rock had already been run. It. I mean, We Were Rock You came out when I was like 14. Right. So I was obsessed with We Were Rock You already, had been for yeah. years. So yeah. it was more just an audition for, you know, the yeah. ninth replacement cast. But that show was crazy. It's the Queen musical. The show is crazy. Like Scaramouche is a character. The show is crazy and being in that show was a baptism of fire. I'm sure. I saw it in London. It was such a baptism of fire that I sort of kept practicing every day. I bought like a microphone for my bedroom and would sort of like practice, oh, listen back, you know. Um, and and by the end of that year, I my confidence had just grown so much. I mean, the, um, our, the associate director was kind enough to keep putting me on. Mm -hmm. So just everything, like how do you handle nerves on stage and everything. So by the end of that year, I, I just felt a lot more confident. Mm -hmm. And that's, and during that year, my green card came through. So just you finished We Will Rock You and yeah. the green card was ready and it was off to was Broadway, off, off to those go. auditions and workshops. Okay, off we're to those oh. Times Square lineups. Times Square and McDonald's. Okay, we're gonna talk more with Gina DeWall after this break. We're back with Gina DeWall. So you got to New York, and you had this edgy rock and roll experience, and we will rock you, so it was like, American Idiot. That, I mean, that was your first show, right? It and was, it, it, but it wasn't, so my equity was transferable. So okay. huge leg up, right, that you, I'm sure everyone knows, but you can actually book time slots if you have equity, whereas if you don't have equity, you have to wait for a time slot to become available. Right, Does that okay, make versus sense? an open call, but like... It's so still an open call, but you can go in the morning and get a time slot, so you can it. book like seven for right. the day, rather than waiting for one to open up. Got it, okay. So definitely a leg up. And um, I auditioned for a show called Wonderland. Ah, Frank Wildhorn. Frank Wildhorn. Everyone writes an Alice in Wonderland musical. That was his. That was his. <laughs> uh, so I booked that. Okay. Um, you booked the show I booked for the, Broadway? For Broadway. To play what? To and study the lead. And then I, because of that, I could go to agents and say, um, I've booked a Broadway show. Oh. Would you help me, you know, negotiate I see a contract? It. I see how this is all falling together It's for all you. falling together. Yeah, and yeah. so um, then I found my agent that I'm still with today. Love them dearly. Great. They got me an appointment for American Idiot, which I booked and I ended up uh, choosing that one. <laughs> I see. So your agents were like, hi, it's nice to sign you. Let's see what's happening over at American Idiot. Yes. And, and you were actually, it was the whole like original cast. and I was you, the first replacement. Right. I replaced Mary Faber, yeah. And it right, was the, because, right. But yes. funny story, Broadway's uh -huh. Alicia Umphrez. Yes. So, it was fantastic, um, yes. She was visiting London when the whole of the hair cast was there. Oh, okay. And we ended up going for a weekend trip to Amsterdam, oh. maybe a month before me moving to New York. Uh -huh. And we got on great, and we made a date to meet in New York for coffee. So the first time I meet her for coffee in New York, she's like, so how's it going? I'm like, good, I start in your show next week. Oh. <laughs> and she, yeah. So, so, so she was like, you're here, and you're in my show. And yeah, yeah. Now, it was she's good. like, now I really have to deal with you. Now she really has to be my <laughs> friend. There's no way around it, yeah. And American Idiot, that's, you were there like when all the rock stars started coming in. Yes, yes, right? like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, like it you was, were there for Billy Joe Armstrong. And yes. Were you there for like Melissa Etheridge? Yes, and, uh, all of them. Yeah, yeah it was crazy. Yeah, it was that, that was like a, a intense show. An I mean, the, show. The, the entire production and the, the energy. I mean, it was big. The whole thing. Yeah, and I, I mean, Stephen Hoggett, he used to have like a touring company that went all around England. So I'd seen his work uh -huh. like a million times and was like obsessed with him already. And then, you know, cool. to be in this new forum, it was cool. And you've had like 
a nice career now. What's been like um, maybe the hardest thing about creating a career? Because obviously Diana is a big moment for you. This is a brand yeah. new musical. Your dream is to originate a role in a musical. Get your voice on that cast album and all those things are gonna happen. What's it been like getting to this point? So I think there was a, a period of time, and by I mean like seven years, where I was really lucky, but I truly was not doing anything except working. Meaning mm. like I was doing readings during the day and a show at night or whatever, and just like jam packing my full life with yeah. it. And then all of a sudden I sort of like turned 27 and couldn't book a single job. You felt like a, a wall. Like a it wall, just a total wall, a mm. total wall of like, I, I could not book anything. And I and I and I and in that same sentence I was being very specific about what I wanted to book. Sure. So, you know, sometimes as an actor you almost have to unemploy yourself yep. if you want to move to mm -hmm. the next, you know, Absolutely. moment. Yeah. Uh but but truly I couldn't and and it was hard and also eye opening that I sort of had aligned my self worth and social life and friend group with always the job mm. you know you don't almost have to make an effort to have any friends when you're in a cast because it's almost like created for you and you don't right. have to fill your own time when your days start at 10 a.m in, and finish at midnight you know um so in that way it was like really really a good time to sort of um figure out who i am when mm. i'm not in this world especially having been in it since 11 you know like what can I hold a conversation with people who aren't performers? And you know, so um, that's a good test, by the way. Yeah, no, yeah, really. And uh, so, so that's sort of been like three years now of huh. back to catering, back to um, auditioning, but being, but staying true to like, but I really just want to do these very specific types of jobs. Hmm. And you know, starting a company that I started called Broadway Weekend. Yeah, and, so you I'm know, doing about all that. these other things, but really like becoming a fully rounded human where um, I'm so over the moon about Diana, but it feels like a job. It doesn't feel like my identity. Does cool. you know what I mean? And I think that took a, a minute having only done performing arts from 11 to 27 without sort of a break in many ways. And yeah. so how does that little journey you took, how does that influence getting ready to step into something like Diana and being on Broadway in this show? How does that change the path for you. Yeah, so well, I think sometimes when you're the actor and there's like 14 people talking at you and a whole people, it's very easy to get overwhelmed sometimes mm -hmm. and not realize how much effort is going into every single detail around you because mm -hmm. you just feel this pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think as soon as you've tried to produce anything yourself, you realize how much effort goes into everything. Organizing anything is such a challenge mm. and a pain and it it gives you such a greater appreciation of how easy your job is as an actor mm. you know it's it's if it, it's really not a hard job compared to the jobs that are around you making it happen right you're the actor now backstage making sure all the tech people are okay and well I <laughs> and the ushers. i'm just like you know <laughs> after three i'm just everyone's like are you okay i'm like here i am getting my hair and makeup done and you know, <laughs> right. someone's bringing me tea i'm like i'm right. not stressed in the slightest right yeah. so you and your sister started this broadway weekend yeah. so tell me what is broadway yeah. weekends tell me about this business so we started doing theater camps for adults Cool, what does that mean? So, uh, <laughs> literally, the workshops that we've been running for children our whole lives, sure. we, you always get asked to do a million workshops for children, but this is specific for adults. Because, as I've sort of said, theater has been in our life from 11, and it was everything to us, including our friendship circle, um, our confidence, our joy, all those sort of things, and it sort of just stops when you're 18. Mm. And there's not really an outlet for people to do that. Community theater is a huge time commitment. Most people in their busy lives don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. And there's also not really any access to have master classes with, f for lack of a better word, the Broadway performers are the best in the business, in mm -hmm. the world, right, at what right. they do. And there's not really any access to have that one-on-one -on -one time and learn from them. It was so fulfilling to see people who are you know, doctors, accountants, lawyers, all those sorts of things find the joy of musical theater and be like, right, this is mm. a joy. Mm -hmm. This is committing to your imagination, getting lost in your own 
imagination, singing with people, moving with people, warming up with people, spending time with people is a social experience. Right. And right now theater is not marketed in that way at all. It's a passive experience where you sit in a darkened house and receive information. Mm -hmm. Whereas there's this whole other element of theater that anyone who's been involved in a performance of any kind knows that it's social, it's, it, it's collaborative, it's all those things and, and that just didn't exist. So it doesn't exist except for us. So we started doing these workshops in, um, New York, and we didn't have any budget, so it was just sort of like word of mouth. They started very small. Mm -hmm. And then at our summer camp this year, we had people from Beijing, from Sydney, from wow. all across America. So then starting in the fall, we teamed up uh, with Broadway National Tours, mm -hmm. picking five this year, and we're going to choose five more this year. And the, the cast in the National Tour lead them as we go around, cool. as they go around the cities. So doing this has now helped you find more joy in your life. And totally. Look at that. Yeah. What an amazing journey. I love it. <laughs> so does it take sort of the pressure off a little bit of being the lead in a music? I mean, do you feel a lot of pressure of being Diana and Diana? I mean, I feel responsibility. Sure. There's writers who've been working on this for years. There's producers who have raised a lot of money yeah. and have their um, name on the line. Right. And, and, I, so, and there's uh, crew and front of house people who will, you know, so I feel a huge amount of responsibility to do the job to the best of my ability and mm -hmm. to be a good leader in la for lack of a better word mm -hmm. within the group but I don't feel this pressure of if this fails right I will fail right yeah. yeah I love that a lot of actors I don't know if they ever get to that point so it's great that you're there <laughs> congratulations <Thank> you. <laughs> and you know the other great thing about playing Diana is that you get your potty mouth Diana's a potty mouth you get a <laughs> great a great number that right I mean like yes. that's still in the show yes yeah. it is yeah it is. that's fun. not going anywhere <laughs> well I'm so excited for you I Thank can't wait you. to see the finished product it's at the Long Acre Theater. Gina DeWall is playing Diana of Wales in Diana the Musical. Thank you so much for Thank being here. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for wearing you. a hot pink suit. Ah. It's perfect. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.